I'm Mally Moore. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is The Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. And what a bleak ending we have for you today. Holy shit. One of the bleakest of bleakest. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. if this is your first time listening to it, this is probably going to be one of, if not the You're longest. You're in for some shit. We have a lot. We have like, I have like six pages of notes, Miley. Of course you do. <laughs> um, if this is your first time listening, we are a podcast that likes to watch movies that have really sad or down or, or fucked up or just confusing endings that don't leave you feeling too great, but we try to, to find the good in it, try to bring people back up. We're not great at it. Nope. But I mean... It's a niche I want to say we're getting better, but I mean that's <laughs> I'd be lying. It's a very so much. niche thing we do. We have a very niche audience. So yeah. Uh, this week's episode, uh, Gone Girl, directed by David Fincher. The year is 2014. Mally, what is your relationship like with this movie? I went and saw this movie when it came out As with did I. my girlfriend at the time. Fun stuff. And that was a mis- mistake. Mistake. <laughs> and you are no longer together <laughs> <Let's Yeah. do it. laughs> she was like we got out of the movie she's like i really like that i was like of course you do well shit <laughs> that's well, mm. what did you think of the movie at the time i mean i love me some fincher mm-hmm. and i love me some affleck and i love me some neil patrick harris i was into this movie and well, casey wilson's in this mm-hmm. where do you put this movie i love happy endings where do you put this movie on fincher's radar top oh, shit top two top five um, the ten. what are we doing above alien three <laughs> that's understandable dude i don't know like it, telling me to pick a favorite fincher movie is like <laughs> i think it's if i asked you to pick your favorite kid I got Don't a, answer I, that. I got a favorite kid. God, you're an <laughs> awful person. Every, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. Every parent has a favorite kid. They just don't want to admit it. Me and my parents need to have a conversation then because yeah. I'm curious. Uh, I'd definitely put it in my top three, I think. Yeah, well, right, you go then. What do you, What's Rate well, the Fincher. For me, it's a toss-up between seven and this. Um, it's probably this, seven, and five club probably... Mold Hold down in the top three. Hold up, the game. <laughs> game is definitely top ten. I'll th- tell you that. Has he even made ten movies? Oh shit! You know what I forgot about Zodiac. Nope, it's Zodiac. Never that's mind. Not, my favorite. F- yep, it's Zodiac. Oh my god, I'm gonna watch Zodiac. Gone later. Girl is definitely top three for me. Um, but yeah, the like I said, the year is 2014. This movie starts Ben Affleck, Rosamund Pike, former Bond girl. Carrie Coon, Kim Dickens, Patrick... Is it Fugit? I can never pronounce his name. Oh, I have no idea. Fugit. Yo, Panic Room! Tyler Perry, Neil Patrick Harris, Missy Pyle, and Casey Wilson. Okay. If you only count his big movies, like not all the TV work, he's li- it's literally ten movies. Yep. Alien 3, mm-hmm. 7, mm-hmm. The Game, Fight Club, Fight Club Panic Room, Zodiac, Benjamin, The Curious Case of Benjamin, Benjamin Button, Button, which... Not a big fan, I'm not going to lie. Meh. The Social Network, Girl with the Dragon oh, Tattoo, social and Gone Girl. God damn. Okay, Gone Girl is definitely top five. Oh, <laughs> but I will throw in Justin Timberlake featuring Jay-Z, the suit and tie video. Yeah. Because that was a good video. Uh, So yeah, this movie had a budget of $61 million and had a worldwide gross of $369 million. That's pretty good for a thriller, dude. Way to go, buddy. Uh, 88 certified... Uh, 88% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Based off a book. Absolutely. Gillian written Flynn. Mm-hmm. by The screenplay written by the novelist the yeah. as well. Uh, do you want to go ahead and listen to the trailer? Fuck yes. All right, let's do it. Nick Dunn, you're probably the most hated man in America right now. Did you kill your wife, Nick? Everyone told us and told us marriage is hard work. Not for me and Nick. As you all know, my wife, Amy Elliott Dunn, disappeared three days ago. I had nothing to do with the disappearance of my wife. I have nothing to hide. Has Amy got friends we can talk to? No, not really. You don't know if she has friends, you don't know what she does all day, and you don't know your wife's blood type. He's being a good guy, so everybody can see him being a good guy. Well, you really don't like him, do you? All I'm trying to do 
is be nice to the people who are volunteering to help find Amy. I will practice believing my husband loves me, but I could be wrong. Have you ever seen that guy in the glasses before? Amy is the kind of girl who attracts admirers. Whoever took her is bound to bring her back. I'm hoping you can tell me what this means. You want to solve Amy's treasure, huh? You seen this girl around here? Yeah, I remember her. I know you. I saw you at the volunteer center. I wanted to help. What'd she want? She wanted a gun. We are all scared, but we are all here now. I feel like something to be jettisoned if necessary. I feel like I could disappear. The hallmark of a sociopath is a lack of empathy. Amy lost a lot of blood in there, then somebody mopped it up. Why would they mop up the blood if they're trying to stage a crime scene? Whatever they found, I think it's safe to assume that it's very bad. I'd finally realized I am frightened of my own husband. I would draw you, as if you do in a deposition, what to say, what not to say. A trained monkey? A trained monkey who doesn't get lethal injections. She's going to eat you alive. You assaulted her? It's not good enough for you? I hit her? It's not even close! Absolutely not. I never touched her. We now believe Nick is involved in the disappearance of our daughter. Without a body, without a murder weapon, their only hope is a confession. You don't know anything yet? You need to tell me. How was your marriage, Nick? Are you asking me if I killed my wife? Man of my dreams, this man of mine may kill me. What about my son, Nick? This man may kill me. In her own words, this man may truly kill me. You ever hear the expression, the simplest answer is often the correct one? Actually, I've never found that to be true. So I think this trailer is intentionally super misleading, but that's kind of the point, right? I mean, yeah. Because I remember seeing this trailer being like, well, it's obviously going obviously gonna to be about did he or didn't he, right? But is it? It's not. It at, Not at all. Not at all. Not in the slightest. <laughs> and this trailer screams Fincher, right? It's got that yeah. same look, that yep. same feel. Very, uh, it also screams Ben Affleck was definitely getting in shape for Batman v Superman because mm-hmm. he, he is swole as mm-hmm. fuck in this movie. And the last for line of no this, reason, <laughs> the last line of this trailer I think is the like the obvious twist on this movie. Like yeah. you saw the trailer and you saw you heard this last line. It's so in retrospect, it's so <laughs> obvious. Which is the last line of this is uh, the two detectives that we're going to get into, the two police detectives, one saying the simplest answer is often the most correct one, and the other one saying, actually, I've never found that to be true, which is pretty much the answer to that's, the movie. That's the whole fucking movie right there, dude. All right, so you want to get into this movie? Well, or you have hang on. While we're about? still in the trailer, mm-hmm. and this obviously plays in the movie as well, can we talk about that fucking score? Oh, yeah, that was my first oh, note. Oh, my God. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross just bringing it. Okay, I am currently in the process of scoring it like a feature film that a friend of mine directed and I'm ripping this score off so fucking hard. <laughs> it's a good score. Specifically one scene. It's a good score, especially because it's supposed to be relaxing and calming, but it definitely isn't. Yeah, it's it's that, uncomfortable. Specifically one scene in this movie, I am just <laughs> do, do, doing a uh, an homage to if you will. Mm-hmm. The it's the big Neil Patrick Harris scene. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a an interesting song. It's got kind of an Inception kind of feel to it. Yeah, um, yeah, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the movie. And again, we this is going to be a longer episode, but mostly it's because we just want to keep the story straight. And it's a long fucking movie. It's a long movie, and a lot happens. And we really like this movie a lot. So that we have a lot to talk about. And I gotta say, compared to last week, this movie has similar kind of look to it. Like in terms of like the color choices, the camera we? choices. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did shame. Yeah, I, like you're right. going from that one to this one, it's kind of like these feel in the same realm with one another. Yeah. Dude, cinematic universe, <laughs> shame and gone girl. Uh, yeah, we talked about the score, which is amazing. Michael I've used... Fassbender probably fucked amazing Amy. We've talked about the score <laughs> already, but the score is just so I use I listen it's... to the soundtrack a lot. Okay, mm. favorite Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross score. He did do the social network, right? Yeah, he did. Probably that one. Okay. Social network score is great. Okay. You have a favorite? Uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, the thing with the what you call it, girl with the dragon tattoo. Mm-hmm. Big fan. of I that need to score. rewatch that movie because I I watched it. I, Me too. I have I've only seen it once. I didn't probably give it its its due its attention when I did watch it. But uh, my next note is there are a lot of fade to blacks in this movie. And not like slow, gradual fade to blacks. They're really quick. 
I think it's to give the illusion of like blacking out almost or like losing consciousness. Yeah. Because uh, it happens a lot, especially in like the most uh, pivotal moments, like the violence or aggression in this movie. It happens a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we start off this film uh, with a voiceover, and it's we fade up as uh, Ben Affleck, who's playing Nick Dunn in this movie, and he's petting the, his wife's head, who's laying her head on his chest, Amy, uh, Amy Dunn, he's petting her head. He's petting his he- uh, her head, rubbing her hair, and he's like, "When I think of my wife, I always think of her head. I picture cracking her lovely skull, cracking open her lovely skull, unspooling her brains, and trying to get answers." Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? It's a great way to start the movie. It immediately puts you into the tone of it. The and that along with the score and the just the ominousness of this whole thing. It's definitely it's uncomfortable. Uh, more so I think than shame's shame uh, the tone of shame was. It's a different kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, you feel like where shame it's almost you feel like you shouldn't be there. And then this one feels more voyeuristic, I yeah. think. Uh, but yeah, we start off and Nick is in front of his house and we get a title card, which one of a lot because this movie's got to keep you straight on the timeline. Well, yeah, of course. Uh, July 5th, the morning of. Nick is standing outside of his front house and kind of just looking around. And uh, then we cut to him walking down the street approaching a bar titled The Bar. Creative. Great name. Super meta. Uh, and he's carrying a Amazing board game. Amazing name. A board game called Mastermind. Uh, and he enters the bar. Turns out this is his bar that he co-owns with his sister Margot, who is his twin sister. And uh, she adds, he brings the board game to her. She adds it to her collection, which I thought was Can funny. We just call out, I love the girl that plays Margot. Yeah, yeah, she's great. What's her name? Carrie Coon. Yeah, yeah her she's awesome. her film debut, I believe. No um, shit. Yeah. Oh. But some of the other board games on this shelf. Oh, hey, she's in the Leftovers. She was in Fargo. In the, the TV show. TV show. Some of the other board games on the shelf, I think, are pretty interesting because it's a, a direct line. Uh, yeah, it was to, her feature film debut. Direct line to what this movie is about. The other board games, did you see this? What, There's um, Let's Make a Deal. There's Let's Make a Deal, Emergency, and a Ouija board. All relevant. <laughs> and I think there might have been that last one. I think there might have been Yahtzee too. Ha! <laughs> uh, it turns out today is the five-year anniversary uh, of Amy and Nick. And uh, we get one of many kind of flashback voiceovers of Amy writing in her journal. And this is her first entry, I believe. This says, I am so crazy, stupid, happy. And we cut back to the night that Nick and Amy met. Uh, they have a very, I think, honest, which is kind of funny, in the, in the, long, uh, the long con aspect yep. of this whole thing. I think they have a very honest meet-cute. Uh, it's very, like, I don't know. It feels genuine. I feel like they really, really care about each other. They really like each other. They really in, like are into one another. What do you think of this scene? Do you buy it at all, or do you really think it's just kind of Amy leading him along? I don't know. <laughs> That's I all you just, got? <laughs> I, I, yeah, that is literally all I got. I also think it's kind of funny because she mentions to uh, Nick that he's got quite the villainous chin, which is funny which because is ironic considering he's Batman. Um, and he's walking her home. Uh, I think this is in Missouri. He's walking her home, and they're, uh, <laughs> they. Pass up by a bakery late at night that's got a delivery coming in, and there's this sugar storm that's kind of going on in the Wait, alleyway. this is in the flashback when they met, isn't it? Yes, this is isn't the night this they in met. New York. Oh, is it New York? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, this is the night they met. Yeah, there's like this sugar storm going on from the bakery, and uh, Nick tells him they, he's got to kiss her now. He wipes some powdered fresh sugar off her lips and gives her a kiss. Yeah. And then they go straight to Cunnilingus <laughs> in the very next scene. Where Amy has to tell Nick that she really likes him in the middle of it. Which I think is sweet. Aww. Uh, Come back to present day and Margot and Nick are playing Life. The board game Life. Which again, ironic. Uh, in their bar. Turns out Amy likes to do scavenger hunts for their anniversary. And so he's getting ready for it. Basically they call it the treasure, the treasure hunt I think. <clears throat> so... When your poor Amy has a cold, this dessert must be sold. This was one of the clues from last year's anniversary that mm-hmm. he never figured out the answer to. Do you get this one? Do you, do you know what the answer is? Because I tried looking it up and couldn't find anything when substantial. You, when your poor Amy has a cold. This dessert What's a dessert that you eat when you're cold? When you have a cold? Uh... 
I don't think we're ever going to find out the answer to this. <laughs> and I don't remember if the movie tells you or not, but... Anyway, Nick's at the bar, and he gets a call from his neighbor, who tells him basically that his front door is left wide open. So he goes home, finds his cat. But what did I say? This cat is predominant throughout this movie, even though it has nothing to do with anything. This cat gets its own money shot a couple times. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this guy, he goes home, he finds out that his door is left wide open, and it appears that there was a break-in. There's uh, Their glass coffee table's been flipped over. There's some things that have been thrown about. And uh, he calls the police. And arrived to the scene are Detective Boney and Officer Gilpin. Or, I don't know. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and they start doing a walkthrough of the house. Turns out there's a little small blood spatter on a kitchen cupboard. Uh, and everything seems to be, yeah, there was some kind of break-in. And Amy is missing now. Dun, dun, dun. Turns out dun, dun, dun. Amy is not just Amy. She is also amazing Amy. Yes, which she is, is. Kind of these... Uh, so stupid. These children's books. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that's relatable to reality. I, can't, I don't really know any books. Basically, she, her life was fabricated in these books as like kids' books. Like Amy goes to the beach. Amy plays volleyball. Amy learns to ride a bike. Like, basically, their par- her parents monopolized on her life, plagiarized a little bit, and turned them into kids' books. And she is known as the titular character, Amazing Amy. Uh, and we get another journal entry. Turns out, Amazing Fucking Amy is getting fucking married. We go to a flashback of the night where Nick proposes to Amy. And apparently, Nick thought Velveeta was a type of cheese. And I gotta ask you, is it not? Because I always thought it was. <laughs> Huh. Is it technically cheese? Probably not. I know it's a cheese product. Yeah. Probably not. But anyways. I mean, it tastes delicious regardless. Yeah, Nick proposes in the most swag fucking way possible, I think. Because he's... She's sitting with, like, her her group of peers who are kind of just asking a question. She's like, oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, and you're not married? They're kind of drilling her about it. And Nick approaches and uh, seemingly uh, these people don't know who he is necessarily. And he starts asking her questions about... Her husband, her fiance, or I guess boyfriend Nick, and yeah, he proposes to her. Um, we cut back to present day, and there uh, is an interrogation—not really an interrogation, but uh, Detective Boney and Gil- Officer Gilpin are getting Nick's uh, statement for you know, exactly what happened. Turns out Nick doesn't know Amy's blood type, which I don't know Priscilla's blood type. No, I, I, I don't. Even, I don't even. I don't know, know mine. I don't know mine at all. Which I think is funny because Boney's like, you don't even know your own wife's blood type, and uh, as Nick. Is walking out to to make a phone call. <laughs> Officer Gilpin turns to him and goes, "Should I know my wife's blood type?" And the Detective Bone is like, "No, of course yeah. not." <laughs> uh, Nick calls um, Amy's parents to let her know that she has been missing. Normally, they say they wouldn't. Uh, you know, a missing case, you kind of have to wait forty eight hours before you can report someone missing. But because she's kind of a high profile person, and because of they say their violent uh, their crime rate has been going up. That they're going to take it very seriously. They're going to go ahead and report it. Uh, and it turns out Nick's dad is also in this station. And he is, he's escaped his assisted living uh, the, the building. And yeah. Nick drives him home. Which i got to ask, does this really have anything to do with anything? No, that scene always confuses me. Like, uh, maybe they're setting it up to let you know why Nick's dad isn't in the old house. But that's all I've, I can yeah, figure. Yeah, I guess. Anyways, uh, turns out Nick's got a trap phone because he, as he's driving his dad to back to the assisted living uh, facility, he pops open his glove box and there's a trap phone in which he tries to make a phone call and someone doesn't answer. We'll find out who that someone is in just a little bit. Now the flashback to Amy and Nick during their their formative engagement or married times uh, where they're fucking in the library. That's always fun. Um, it, it and apparently, it, apparently, it's a routine because they mentioned that normally they wait till the third library or the third bookstore to do that, and this time they're going to make an exception. So, yeah, hmm. fun stuff. Risk right. day. Well, hey, do what you do. Uh, as Detective Boney is conducting the like a search of the house to kind of like check out the crime scene, this woman approaches uh, Amy's neighbor five doors down, Noel Hawthorne, and quote unquote best friend. Mentions that uh, she would like to give her testimony as to what happened to Amy, but she doesn't really know exactly what happened. 
Uh, and we find out everything that Nick owns is in Amy's name. Everything. The house, even the bar he owns is in Amy's name. All his credit cards, everything. It's a bold move. Absolutely. Uh, searching through the house, uh, one of the officers finds an envelope in Amy's underwear drawer that has just the words Clue 1 written on it. This is ama- Amazing Amy's treasure hunt for her husband on their anniversary. We get another title card, July 6th. One day gone. So Amy's been gone for one day. Uh, Amy, Amy's parents come to town for a press conference they're going to have. They set up a hotline and a website uh, to, if anybody has tips on where Amy, what her whereabouts are, 1 855 4 Amy Tips and findamazingamy.com. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris, who's playing Desi Collings, is actually there at the press conference trying to help out. And turns out, he uh, attempted suicide after Amy left him sophomore year, and she Fuck. had to file a restraining order. Uh, basically, he's just a bad case all Dude, around. All right, Neil Patrick Harris doesn't have a ton of screen time in this movie, but he fucking crushes it. Exactly, every time I he's on me screen, he's great. Yeah, like he, yeah, he's like this movie was perfectly casted mm-hmm. in my opinion. Although the other cat, some of the other considerations for some of the roles were interesting. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, turns out, yeah, Amy's parents don't really trust him because of all this shit that's happened. They think he might have something to do with her disappearance, but they can't really do anything about it. So clue one, uh, we get to finally see, understand what's in the envelope, and it's another riddle. Although this spot couldn't get be, uh, ugh, although this spot couldn't be any tighter. <laughs> It's a cozy room for my favorite writer. <laughs> Turns out it's uh, Nick's office. So he and the detectives go to Nick's office and they find clue two. And clue two is... Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> hey, handsome man, let's go undercover. You be the spy and I'll be the lover. Let's head on over to the little brown house. We'll play hot, doting husband, sweet, loving spouse. And the detectives hmm. find a pair of red panties in this office. And they ask him, you know, is this Amy's panties? He goes, I don't know. It should be. Maybe. Um, but yeah, Nick goes to his father's <laughs> old house that he used to live in before he went to assisted living. And this is a blue house. Yeah, it is not brown. It's not brown at all. And the alarm goes off. What Turns the out, fuck, Fincher? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out uh, Boney is there because she, you know, is doing work trying to f- figure out what's going on with Amy's disappearance. So she went and investigated her father's old house. And they find clue three. Which we don't get to find out. Dun, exactly. dun, dun. We don't get to find out exactly dun, what dun, clue dun. three is until after Nick leaves. He doesn't even read it there in front of the detectives. Yeah. But yeah, the house is actually blue, not brown. So the detectives are kind of baffled. Like, what does this brown house mean? And clue three. This is where things start to kind of switch up. Uh, clue three reads: I'm a girl who's very, very bad. I need to be punished, and by punished, I mean had. It's where you keep goodies for anniversary five. So open the door and look alive. Nick reads this and immediately pretty much just punches his steering wheel. And I think he says bitch under his breath, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. This is kind of your first instance that something's not quite up with Amy's disappearance. Yeah. Or, and, well, something is up with Amy's disappearance. Well, yeah, something's not quite right with all this. There you go. There it was. Uh, You're going to get there eventually. Yeah, another flashback. Uh, turns out Amy and Nick are both broke and unemployed because of the recession hit. And she says, you know, marriage... Thanks, Obama. Yeah, she says... Uh, you know, marriage is very hard work, but if you want to see how truly bad it can get, he was like, she says, I think, uh, add a married couple, uh, subtract two jobs, or something like that. It's a very clever way, basically, saying yeah. they're just unemployed. Uh, turns out she also signed a prenup as well. Yep. Because she got that money. She apparently has to give away a lot of her trust fund money to her parents, uh, and Nick is, again, they're unemployed, so they're really on the downward yeah. spiral. Because he was... He was a writer for a magazine, I think. And she was a writer as well. Back in present day, they're at a convention center, which is basically a meetup for to get the search party going for Amy. And, again, Desi is there. And uh, this is a really interesting part. Basically, Nick's worried about his image in the public eye because he knows that anytime a spouse goes uh, a person goes missing they always look to the spouse as like the number one suspect so while he's trying to you know play up the idea of being disgruntled and upset and he's been up for days and mm-hmm. you know he's also trying to maintain a public image because he's trying right. to be nice to people who are volunteering to help look for Amy and everything this is where things get start to go down in the downward spiral for him 
he uh, this real housewife kind of woman comes up and asks to take a <laughs> selfie with Nick. Uh, really well, she doesn't really ask. She's just like, "Can I get a picture?" And real quick, he she snaps a photo of the two, and he asks her to delete it because he doesn't want you know obviously to look like he's smiling and hanging out with these women and being a celebrity. And in fact, the mother in law even mentions it that he's like the goddamn homecoming uh, king. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she refuses and is very yeah, I mean, offended by it. When you look like Ben Affleck, I mean, there's not just, I mean, you're yeah. just going to look like that. There's nothing you can do. It's not his fault. No, no, no not at all. Uh, another flashback turns out that Nick moved Amy back with him to Missouri after they found out that Nick's mom had cancer. Oh. Yeah, and she just wished, she didn't mind, she just wished that Nick had asked her. Right. Uh, there's this name. I'm just going to call her Nancy Grace because that's basically what they're alluding to. I don't remember. Cell Award? Yeah. Dude, fucking Cell Award. <laughs> uh, Coming in. Way to go. Nick's watching TV at his sister's house because he's staying there. And there's like this Nancy Grace type woman on TV. And she's basically saying she's got the photo of Nick hanging out with this real housewife woman. She's like, does this look like the type of man who's sad to be seeing that his wife's missing? Basically accusing him of like... Going all around accusing him of yeah. having something to do with Amy's disappearance. Uh, in the middle of the night, we've, uh, this woman uh, arrives. Emily Radigowski, is that how you pronounce her name? I have no idea. You tired? <sighs> I'm sleepy. Uh, Nick's side piece, basically, Andy, uh, who is one of his students, because Nick is also a teacher at a local community college, shows up to Margot's house, and he asks her, did you leave a pair of red panties in my office? She says, oh, I don't know, I might have. And they fuck hard in Margot's house. Yeah, they do. Ah, another flashback. Turns out Nick mo- Nick's mom died anyway of cancer. And a- Amy's observation in her journal entry is that Nick is starting to come undone. Uh, Amy wants a baby, and Nick and because they're they're still kind of like on rough rough times. I think they're both unemployed still. Uh, oh, she uh, at this point she's already co-signed for the bar and like. Pretty much it's costing more money than it is coming in, so it's not really a good financial decision for him. But Amy mentions that she wants a baby. And Nick has a very good point. He says a baby is not a hobby. It's it's absolutely true. And I would not know. She uh, basically says, you know, she it's kind of hinting that maybe a baby will save their marriage, but she doesn't want to come out and say it. And when he, when he says it, she gets offended by it. Yeah, because that always works out. Yeah, you... But that's true. You a baby cannot save a marriage or rekindle. Challenge marriage. accepted. Yeah. <laughs> First, I'm gonna get married. <laughs> um, Ladies, they they argue and Nick ends up throwing Amy to the floor. Uh, and one of these moments, and I mentioned these these quick fade to blacks. It's very kind of disorienting and uh, it's just it's creepy as fuck. Yeah. And she mentions that she it wasn't that he threw her to the ground and caused her physical harm. It's how much he wanted to do it, or how much more he wanted to do. So basically, says she's frightened of her husband. Uh, Boney and Gilpin investigate this like abandoned mall that's now a place for like junkies and homeless people to hang out, and uh, they go there because they have a lead on a guy that this I think is such a cool fucking location. Yeah, I think it's a guy that used to stalk Amy, or so, or basically it's like an informant that they use to try and get information about missing yeah. people. But there's this guy, Jason, who basically says, yeah, Amy came to me because she wanted a gun. <coughs> All right. Cut to next title card, July 8th. Three days gone. Uh, in the early, Andy was supposed to leave Margot's house in the morning before the morning came because Nick doesn't want Margot to find out. So he escorts Andy out. And uh, apparently he's been having an affair for a year and a half. And we find this out because Margo is pissed. Yeah. She fucking sees him walking Andy out of the door. She can fucking, like, gets down his throat about it. And Nick's like, look, our marriage was going downhill. You would... I resented going home because I knew she would be there, you know. So he's cheating on Amy with one of her students. One of, one of his students. And then there's another Nancy Grace program on. And this time they have a very high-profile lawyer that she's interviewing basically trying to have like a think piece going on about nick again tanner bolt played by tyler perry fuck this is tyler perry's best role oh hands down um and he he like kind of regrets doing yeah i know which is fucked um but yeah tanner's kind of pretty much defending nick saying you know uh you have because she she basically alludes that nick's a sociopath because of how cool he's taking everything and smiling for the pictures and everything and Tanner's like, well, it'd be 
he said, she said, this is abnormal behavior. He says, well, it's abnormal to behave normal in these kind of situations. Like, yeah. and he's got a point. And Nick makes a very interesting comment uh, watching this. He says, I'm so sick of being picked apart by women. <laughs> well, you, it's just getting started. Um, dun, dun, dun. The detectives dun, dun, dun. are still doing a, a investigating the crime scene in Nick's house. And turns out there is a stain on Nick's floor. And Amy's blood was all over it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they hold a candlelight vigil. Uh, vigil. Vi- candlelight vigil for Amy. A candlelight vigil. A candlelight vigil that... Uh, I mean, you Nick's, do see the candle, so I guess Nick technically speaks is at, uh, And he announces to the public that he had nothing to do with Amy's disappearance. He just wants to clear his name. And this is where we get a, the bombshell that sends this movie into a whole nother... This movie switches it up a number of times, but this is the big bombshell. Yeah. So that crazy woman that claimed she was uh, Amy's best friend, Noelle... Comes running through the crowd saying, Nick, what did you do with Amy? What did you do with, to your wife? Uh, where is your did you, where do you, where is your pregnant wife? <coughs> Turns out Amy was God, six weeks pregnant. Uh, Nick didn't know, know this at all, so he runs back to his house to get away from the paparazzi and everyone trying to ask him questions. The detectives follow him. Turns out Nick didn't know about Noelle, who is, again, Amy's best friend. Mm-hmm. But, Casey uh, Wilson. But Boney has a bunch of, of photos uh, that have Amy and Noel smiling and hanging out together. Aww. Uh, and then Boney and, and Officer Gilpin just start drilling Nick and Vesca. Like, dude, you've obviously got... T- tell us what's going on. It turns out this break-in was staged to look like a kidnapping. Uh, everything was done pretty much to the T to make it look like a kidnapping, but it was clearly staged. And the reason they say, you know, most people that would do this want us to uh, try to do it as a kidnapping to look outside the house when really we should be looking inward. Yep. Turns out Nick is $100,000 in credit card debt. Good Lord. He looks at the, the credit card statements, uh, things he doesn't even remember buying. Turns out Nick also bumped up Amy's life insurance policy to $2.1 million ah. just months before all this happened. And he says, well, like she told me to. He saw how deep the hole was mm-hmm. and just kept. Digging. And he says, Amy wanted me to do this. And then Boney gets a call. Amy was definitely pregnant. And Nick snaps. He breaks the glass. Tells him, tells the detectives to get out of his house. He doesn't want to speak to them again without a lawyer. Uh, man, it was just... It, it, everything kind of comes to like a oh, furious yeah. it hits speed the right here. Fan. Uh, Nick tells uh, Amy's parents on the phone that she didn't want kids. And here's where we find out that Nick actually went to a fertility clinic mm-hmm. uh, because he did want kids. And then Amy threw his sample in the trash. God damn. So. What the fuck is going on? This is a vital piece of information I think that we'll come back to later. Uh, in this scene, Margo is also drilling Nick because I think she believes de- Nick definitely killed Amy or had something to do with it. I like, think I don't think she's like convinced, but she's definitely like, oh fuck. Like, she's like, dude, all signs point to it. I'm not. She says, I would never ask you if you killed your wife, but I mean, come on, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Boney doesn't want to arrest Nick without a body. Yeah. So which they, is smart. <laughs> they go to the old house again. Yep, they go back to Nick's father's old house. Uh, turns out there's a furnace in the basement, and they find a journal. Uh, oh. This all this is happening while Nick is reevaluating Clue Three. And he puts together that basically there's something in Margot's woodshed. That's the brown house. Yep. Wood, wood is brown, you know, that kind of thing. Now inside, it makes sense. Inside Margot's shed is a just ton, everything you could ever fucking want. A ton of stuff. Like a uh, fucking Sony Bravia TV, a fucking amp, a, a, a fucking drone. There's a shit ton of stuff. As well as a very neatly wrapped present right in the middle. Yep. And this this is where our clue from last week comes in. Guys, check your credit card yeah. statements. <laughs> yes. Uh, we cut back to July 5th, the morning of Amy's disappearance. And this is where the movie goes again, just one of the many times. It flips itself. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Amy's alive. Yeah. And she now he's alive. Is not dead as fuck. Not only is she alive, she starts off by saying, I am so much happier now She's that I'm dead. Alive. She's fucking crazy. Technically, she says, I'm missing, but soon to be presumed dead, gone. And my lazy, lying, cheating, oblivious husband will go to prison for my murder. Uh, Amy fakes her own death, basically. That's that's what's happening here. And she faked it hard. Oh, no. 
She went all out. To like the most masterful way she of getting away with it. She did not fuck around at all. So let's talk about it here. Amy's guide. This is what I like to call Amy's guide on how to fake your own death and frame your spouse. Step one. Step one is befriend the local idiot. <coughs> right? Yep. Uh, step two. Step two is uh, basically drop subtle hints that your husband has a temper problem, that he has aggression issues. And finally, step three. Although oh, this is just this is not final. This is there's a ton of steps involved with this. But step three is wait till idiot friend gets pregnant and steal her urine. Step four. Uh, you have to stage the crime scene to, while your husband's away or your spouse away to make it look like a kidnapping, but to do a, a very sloppy job so that the police will. Basically, go on this kidnapping idea for a while until things start to pop up and not make sense. Step five. Step five is you got to bleed. A lot. A lot, a lot. Uh, basically, Amy drains her own blood, spills it all over the floor. She's Steps- a vampire. She's a vampire. <laughs> Step six is basically clean it up sloppily like he would do if he actually did kill you. Step seven. Steps, dude, there's so many steps. But yeah, yeah step we, could seven, do, we could be here for a while. Step seven is basically move away. <laughs> and, yeah, run. And disguise yourself. Uh, dude, she did everything. So... I love her choice of hideout, too. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a shitty trailer park. It's kind of, yeah, it's like a weird motel. She's hiding out in disguise. She dyes her hair. She gains weight, like a lot of weight. Uh, Basically hides out in like this cheap kind of trailer parky motel thing. Uh, and she gives herself a black guy with a ball peen hammer in order to really feel blend like there's in. There's other ways to give yourself a black eye besides hitting yourself in the face with a hammer. Yeah, dude. Uh, she goes all out. And she even mentions that she what she was going to do, well, she's still planning on doing it, is basically fill herself up with pills, drive her car into a lake, and make it look like Nick not only. Killed her, but threw her body in a lake as well. And mm-hmm. he will he will go to prison for it. Um, but she's got things to do first. She's got she's got things to do. So she wants to basically see what's going on with Nick. See how the public eye is going on because she obviously can't just you know sit down in a local place and watch TV because people will recognize her. Right. So she like so she hides out in this place. And uh, here is uh, the next clue that was inside the box. Dear husband, I know you think you're moving through the world unseen. Don't believe that for a second. I know where you've been and I know where you're going. For this anniversary, I've arranged a trip. Follow the river, up, up, up. Sit back and relax because you are you are done. Up, up, the river is obviously going to prison. Amy was yep. going to give Nick uh, puppets as an anniversary gift. The Punch and Judy puppets, which I got to ask. Do you know what the Punch and Judy puppets I are? I have no idea yet again. It's like this kind of violent-y puppet show uh, that was on TV. And Punch and Judy were the main characters. They would kind of like fight each other and everything. Basically, this was kind of Amy's way of not only telling Nick that she was pregnant, but also it's kind of like slapping them in the face, uh, um, which will come. These puppets will come in come in handy later. Yep. So basically, Amy is a diabolical genius. <laughs> uh, turns out Nick was also going to ask for a divorce the morning of their anniversary, and Margo. Damn. Margo straight up believes Nick now. Like yeah. obviously, Amy is framing you everything. Uh, Amy, who is now Nancy, uh, sweet name, is hiding out in this place. She pretends to be from New Orleans. She and she meets quote unquote befriends uh, her neighbor Greta, Greta, who is fucking Greta, white trash as shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, this is again Jesus. July eighth, three days gone. Yeah, three Greta, days Greta and Nancy are chilling by the pool, uh, and this guy kind of hits on them. Which comes in uh, comes into play later. This kind of rednecky dude. Uh, she mentions, "Yeah, my husband cheated on me." And Amy is, while she's making up this story to make Greta believe her, like Nancy's backstory, it's also, also kind of the truth. Yeah. Uh, Amy went to the bar one night because she was going to surprise Nick while they were married, and uh, she notices Nick exiting the bar with Andy, uh, who is, he, she says is a girl that she is way too young that he's should be not even hanging associating with because she's too young. And she sees Nick kiss her. But not only does he kiss her, he basically does the same thing he did with her in the sugar storm of wiping the sugar oh, off Oh, shit. But with, I think it's snow. I think they're you on the snowstorm. You fucker. So he's got that signature move. I'm going to steal it. And this is where she's like, we fuck him, We live in Florida. Basically. There's no snow. And nope. I don't eat donuts a lot. Uh, so July 9th. This is the, the four days gone. Uh, Nick flies to meet with Tanner Bolt. 
who is just absolutely tickled by Nick's story. Uh, he yeah. thinks it's the craziest thing he's heard, but he definitely believes it. And he says he's going to take the case, but he's got a $100,000 retainer. Jesus. Just the retainer, guys. That doesn't include labor or paperwork or anything else. That's just the fucking retainer. Uh, Margo basically says she's got forty five grand in savings she can get, which, first of all, holy fuck. Just in savings? That is bananas. Um, like, they own, they run a bar. I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Turns out uh, Tanner's idea is that they need to change the public's perception of Nick. Everyone hates Nick right now. He needs to. You need to make them like you before. Make them hate Amy. Exactly. Flip it on Amy. So he needs people that are going to back him up to convince the public to see Amy and not this, oh, damsel in distress type. So he meets with an ex-boyfriend of Amy's named Tommy. Tommy. And not I, the Power Ranger, guys. I feel Tommy got is probably the most... Is the saddest, most tragic character in the story. Yeah, uh, Tommy basically dated uh, Amy, and uh, he she basically falsely reported that he raped her. Mm-hmm. Not only that, she staged it beautifully. Uh, he, Practice she, makes perfect. She basically he basically said that she kept buying me ties, and he didn't know why. And then one night she came over to his house, and like consensually, she wanted to have rough sex. Like choking and everything, he said. The next morning, uh, she I wake up to the police and they see that she's got marks and bruises that are consistent with rape. Not only that, but she's got a, one of his ties wrapped around her leg, insinuating that he tied her to the bed. And he, he said, uh, you know, Nick asked him, "Well, when's the last time you saw Amy?" He said, "Oh, last week on TV with you." And it turns out she's graduated from being raped to being murdered. I love that line. It's a great line. Uh. Amy finds out that she was pregnant, I think, from the Nancy Grace program. Because they're they're talking about, oh, well, you know, she's basically watching the recap of what's happening. And again, this sounds confusing, but we're going to get into it later. Mm-hmm. Um, this Greta girl is watching it with her, and she's like, I don't know, this Amy girl seems like a stuck-up, uppity bitch. She married a rich asshole. She got what she's coming to her. And Amy is so petty. And I think mm-hmm. this scene kind of, like solidifies her pettiness because not only do we have this thing with Tommy that we find out obviously the thing with Nick we find this out like she, Greta goes to the bathroom and Amy spits in her drink while she's gone like Amy's pettiness knows no level mm-hmm. I think it's funny because zero fucks I think it's funny too because Greta comes back in she's watching TV and she <coughs> makes a comment about the Nick thing saying well with Amy being missing says well there are consequences as she drinks the soda mm-hmm. yeah there's consequences for crossing Amy pretty much yeah do not fuck with Amy not only that but Nancy Grace gets so far in to even say that uh, she basically implies th- that Nick and Margot are intimate with one another. She watches Game of Thrones a lot. And I think it's funny because Nick's watching this in an airport while he's coming back from seeing D- uh, Tanner. And the guy makes a comment saying, oh, twincest. <laughs> um, Love the wordplay. So Amy sees this. She's furious about how all this is going on and makes an anonymous report of quote unquote suspicious activity outside of Margo's woodshed. And there we go. So she thinks she's gonna catch Nick red handed with all the stuff that's in that trailer base in the in the woodshed basically. Nick decides he's gotta go see Desi, uh, Neil Patrick Harris and Amy's ex boyfriend to try and get him on his side. Awkward as shit this and scene. I think it's so great. And oh no it's NPH fan- plays it up great. And but... basically Neil Patrick Harris is like, fuck off, I'm not helping you. Mm-hmm. Nick tries to go back to the bar, but the bar is now overrun by tourists. I just want to take a picture out in front of it because this case is huge. This is like the Scott Peterson trial kind of thing going on. Which, I mean, that was uh, a huge pretty influence. much who Affleck like, yeah. studied. So now we're on July 10th, five days gone. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we're catching up. After the div- Basically, after uh, the divorce that was going on uh, with Nick's dad... Nick liked to pretend that his dad was a spy named Mr. Brown, who, for the sake of his children's safety, had to deny their existence. This is where, in that clue, we find out all oh, about the Brown house. Yep. Is, that's who his dad... He used to think that his dad was a... He used to pretend his dad was a spy oh, named Mr. Brown. That's his house. coming everything. back around. Yep. Uh, we cut back to Amy, who's playing putt-putt with Greta and the guy that we're hitting on him, basically her new boy toy. And Amy drops her satchel that is... Filled with money. Amy's got a ton of money that she took with her. Yep. Cash, of course. Uh, to hide out with. 
And uh, she asked, she, you know, from afar, you can't really see. So they're like, that's a lot of money. She goes, oh, it's mostly singles. And the guy, uh, Greta asked, are you a stripper? And the guy was like, where do you work at? Swamp Girls or Treasure Chest? And I got to ask you, which one is your favorite out of those two? Swamp Girls. Really? I like Treasure Chest. Hands down. I think Treasure Chest is just funny. It's it's clever. I think it's great. So yeah, they they kind of give him a look like... Swamp Girls go. just seems like super disgusting, and I just, I'm just I, I'm down to go I, though. I'm it sounds curious. fun. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of like there's like sprinklers going off. And <laughs> Basically, they give her a snakes. look of, "Hey, lady, you got a lot of money, and they want it." Mm-hmm. So we're on July 11th now. Six days gone. Tanner wants Nick to go public about Andy, who is again his uh, his little girl side piece, uh, because. If she if he doesn't, then they're gonna find out about it, and that's just gonna be one more thing that's gonna look bad on Nick is that he was cheating on Amy. Uh, she he wants Nick to go on this this talk show, this kind of like a, a sixty minutes kind of thing, and basically clear his name. Uh, meanwhile, with uh, going, what's going on with Amy is Greta and her Greta and her friend, the guy, basically rob Amy of all her money, Shitty. all of her money, like thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. yeah. It was not all singles. Not only that, but she they throw up against the wall. They you know they basically like look. You say your name's Nancy, but you don't ever answer to it. Your hair has obviously been dyed recently, and it looks like shit. You're running from something. We don't know what. They don't recognize her as Amy, basically. But they say well, you're running from something. We don't care why. So you're not going to call the cops, obviously. So they just steal her money. Yeah. And uh, Amy's on the side of a road, and she calls someone on a payphone. We don't. Dun, get, dun, dun, we don't find out who, dun, but dun, dun. it's going to be very apparent soon. Tanner coaches Nick on what to say and what not to say, basically like he would a deposition to go yep. on his TV. Um, Amy meets the person she called at a casino. Fucking Desi. It's Desi. She basically tells Desi, you know, Nick tried to kill me. I had to fake my own, you know, death to get mm-hmm. away. She's basically playing right... Just lying her ass Throwing off. herself at Desi pretty much to try and get him to... to Give her money and the places go and everything. And he eats it up. He eats that shit right He's up. He's in. He sets her up in his lake house. And while this is going on, as right before Nick's about to go on his interview, uh, Amy's parents gets to Andy before he can. And Andy goes public on TV and basically says, you know, I had an affair with And just Nick. like the fucking most cliche little like Catholic school yep. girl outfit. Amy even makes a comment about it. <laughs> uh, and Nick's parents also say, you know, we used to love Nick, Nick uh, like a son and that love ended today. So pretty much Nick is in the weeds about this shit. Yeah, he's he's uh he's not looking too fucked. good. But he does his interview and he quote unquote kills it, which I think is funny. Hmm, Choice hmm. words. Uh, well, we don't get to see the interview yet. We're gonna see it in just a little bit. And I gotta say, we cut back to Desi and Amy at Desi's lake house, and his lake house is Dude, fucking insane. Holy fuck, this house is a this is just his lake incredible. house too. There's cameras yeah. everywhere. There's heated floors. Like, I know Ben Affleck's Batman, but Neil Patrick Harris is living in the fucking Batcave. God, dude. Yeah, he is. 100%. He's living at Wayne Manor. Mm-hmm. We cut to July 13th, eight days gone. Yep. Uh, Nick, Nick sneaks... Nick goes to his sister's house. Nick goes over, sneaks over to, his, to Margo's house to watch an interview, uh, and Amy and Desi watch it at the lake house as well. And let me kind of put it in perspective. Amy just wants... To stay here and not have anything to do with Desi. But she's leading him on kind of at the same time. Desi buys her new clothes. Gets her, you know, all, all kinds of sh- Anything she wants. He got it. He's got it for her. So they watch the interview. Uh, and basically, Nick kind of gets the upper hand here. Because he says exactly what Amy wants to hear. And he even makes a comment. I don't need to change anyone else's minds about me. Just Amy's. Yeah. Uh, before he goes on the interview. And he even makes a quote. He's, he looks in the camera and he's talking to Amy. Amy, I love you. I miss you. And he has a very interesting choice of words here. Love he says, this. I've taken myself to the woodshed for the way that I've treated you. And Amy's ears kind of perk up. Like, oh shit, he, he's figured this shit out. And uh, yeah. Basically, Desi says, look, you need to move on. You need to move past this. And Amy's like, well, look, I need time to think. And like, it should, I, you know, all this shit's happening right now. I need time. And he says, no, time is exactly what you don't need. You've led me on a string for 20 years. And, you know, I'm not going to force myself on you like Nick did. I'm not going to abuse you like he did. But you should at least, like, you know, I don't know. I, I think Desi's got a good heart, but I also think he's got a temper that's just waiting to unfold. Yeah. Um, and I think Amy realizes that, too, because we'll, we'll find out in the next scene, I guess. Uh, Bonus shows up 
to Margot's house with a search warrant for Margot's woodshed, and they find everything in there. They arrest Margot because, of course, it's yeah, like helping it's, in it's a bait, her, uh, yeah. abetting and the it's missing her Amy. shed. Uh, they interrogate Nick hard this time, and Nick denies pushing Amy or violating her because they have Amy's journal, and they're like, look, right here, it says you did it. The very last line here is, I'm afraid my husband will kill me. Yep. Nick makes a comment, well, that's a very convenient end note. Basically, he knows Amy is out there, mm-hmm. and he knows that what she's, she's trying to frame him for murder, and the detectives aren't buying it. Plus, they come in with the quote-unquote murder weapon, which, which was is... the one of the handles from the puppets uh, of course, got Amy's blood on it. Uh, and they arrest Nick. So that's where the puppets kind of come back into play. We're now on July 26th. 21 days gone. Amy is looking herself again. She looks beautiful. Cuts her hair. re yep. it. And she looks like she's just eating it up with Desi. But Desi goes to leave. And he she kind of aggressively kisses him. Like almost like draws blood just by biting him. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of weird because at this point you don't necessarily know what's going on. But Amy... What waits till he leaves? She ties something around her leg, like a ribbon or a tie, mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, dips her. She's got like this nightgown on. Dips it in like a uh, grape juice or like something very dark around like her crotch area, and basically plays it up for the cameras there, like she just escaped from like a rape assault by Desi, and is like trying to escape the 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 lake house pretty much. Yep. Which, when you first see this, I, I gotta ask, I was like, what the fuck is happening, right? Yeah. Well, we cut back to Nick, and Nick is out on bond, and he, he basically, Tanner's like, we gotta prepare your defense. Cut back to Amy. Oh, God, I don't like this part. Amy. This part's fucked, dude. Takes a box cutter and opens up this bottle of wine, and basically assaults herself sexually with this wine bottle. Jesus. Uh, it's very... You don't see anything, but it still feels graphic. Yeah. Like You feel uncomfortable. Like, I shouldn't be watching it this. It is fucked. Uh, Desi comes home, and Amy is like, look, we need to fuck right now. Yep. I want it. And she, quote-unquote, consensually has really aggressive sex with Desi. Which, and he's kind of like, no, like, slow Yeah, he's down. like, look, She's we like, need no, to slow no, down. No, no, harder. She's like, I want it harder. And he's like, mm-hmm. we look, we should take this slow. But yeah, they, she, it's consensual. This is the scene I ripped off for the score. Yeah, it's consensual right up to the point where she cuts his throat with the box cutter. And dude, it's... God, the way they cut this together is it does just that, so fucking It does those good. quick flashes to black. It does like the bomb kind of score over it. It's the most macabre thing ever, but it's so fucking beautiful to watch. It's such a cool... like oh, It's just an awesome scene, dude. So she basically just un- destroys Desi, like lets him bleed out, and she's just covered in blood in this cocktail dress, and we cut to August 4th, now 30 days gone, and Amy has come home. Amy stole Desi's car, basically crashes it in the front driveway, and there's all these people outside, like paparazzi and news people, waiting to get any scoop they can on Nick. Yep. They see Amy come in, she's covered in blood. And in this dress, she goes up to Nick, throws her arms around her, and he, where no one else can see, he whispers in her ears, you fucking bitch. Love it. And she kind of throws herself like she faints, and everybody's snapping photos, and Nick is just kind of looking at the cameras like a deer in headlights. <sighs> Amy's at the doctor. Turns out her wounds are consistent with rape, and they find Desi's uh, semen inside of her. So... Basically, what happens is Amy sees the interview of Nick on TV, decides, I've got to get back to him, but I've got to make it my whole story be consistent. So she frames Desi as the one who kidnapped her, <laughs> kept her at his lake house, tortured her, assaulted her, and she managed to kill him and get away. So she's playing up the victim even harder than before. Which, after like meeting the Desi character, you're kind of like, oh, I, yeah, no, I, yeah. I yeah. can see it. That's something he would definitely do. He's creepy as fuck. But Nick's not buying it. No. Detective Boney's not buying it. Margo's not buying it. Tanner's not buying it. But what can they do? They don't have anything to prove no. it. So the FBI is there because they've taken over the case. And they're interviewing Amy, who is on heavy painkillers, as the doctors say. She kind of tells her story. Oh, Desi came in that day. He forced himself on me. There was, I got to the kitchen. We fought. Uh, you know, I bled a lot. He drugged me away. Tied me up. At his lake house, raped me, assaulted me, uh, 
And Boney believes, I should mention, Boney believes Nick at this point. Because yeah. she's alive, and he, she, she obviously, obviously Nick didn't kill her. And he tells her the story, and she's like, all right, I believe you. Uh, Amy, of course, goes on this whole story. And the whole time, Boney is kind of like trying trying to get questions out of her because her story is not lining up. Yeah. And she kind of fades off, which it's so annoying. Because she's like, Desi had a temper. We had money problems. Oh, no, she's talking about Nick. She says, he has a temper. We had money problems, but I love him. And Amy's like, well, then why did you try to buy a gun? And Amy's like, oh, I'm sorry. I feel myself fading. And she kind of faints, mm-hmm. fake faints again. And Nick's watching all this with Officer Gilpin. And she, he's like, well, how did she manage to get a hold of a box cutter if he had her tied up the whole time? Yep. And Officer Gilpin's like, can you just shut up and be happy that your wife's home? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, like, every like, there's only a handful of people that can see this story is obviously... Not, you know, but... But I feel like at this point, even they're just like, whatever, it's fucking over. Just yeah. thank God. Uh, they go home. Amy's like, look, Nick. Uh, well, they go home and Nick's like, look, you can stop pretending. You know, the, there's no cameras on you now. Amy's like, well, if, do you want to know what happened? Then come up to the shower. I want to make sure you're not wearing a wire. Basically, they shower together naked. She's washing all this blood off of her. Mm-hmm. Uh and she, he's like, look, you killed a guy just to get a, get what you wanted. And she's like, the man I saw in the interview was the man is the man I fell in love with. That's the one I want. And she goes, yeah, but I was only telling you what you wanted to hear. And basically, she's kind of blackmailing him. Like, He's like, look, I'm leaving. He's like, yeah, you think that's really smart to leave the woman that was not only considered missing and kidnapped, but has been <coughs> raped and tortured and you know had to kill a man just to escape? You're going to leave that woman? Like, you'd be the most hated person of all time. <laughs> And basically, he's stuck. Not only he's only, he's not only stuck this way; he's gonna get stuck a lot harder here in a minute because we're wrapping up the movie here. Yep. Uh, Amy mentions that she still wants a baby because he asked ah. her. He asked her. He said, "Was were you even pregnant?" She goes, "I can be," and she kind of motions for him to come into bed. Yeah, because we ask, didn't we didn't mention that she faked the pregnancy. Yeah, she faked the pregnancy. She stole. She stole the pregnant woman's the urine. Friends. Yeah. The well, the friend who she wasn't really friends Noelle. with. Noelle's urine and planted it to make it seem like she was pregnant when she went missing. Yeah. So, uh, am I gonna ask? Does she really want a baby at this point? Because I'm not even sure. Fucking dude, I don't know. Because part of me thinks that oh, she thinks that you know the Nick that she saw in the interview, like she says, that's Nick she wants to be back with. She thinks all this can be fixed again, but she tried to frame her husband for murder. Like I don't think there's any coming back from that. But we're back at the start here. So Nick's outside of his house, and he's he basically says, "Once all your groupies are gone, I leave." Like, and this is the uh, the morning of August fifth, where we see him at the beginning. She's one day home now, and the news vans are kind of leaving, and everyone's kind of like dispersing at this point. And Amy's giving a press conference, basically, and Nick's there too. And they, she mentions to the news uh, that's there, when two people love each other and can't make that work, that's the real tragedy, which is basically exactly what's happening here for Nick. But she doesn't. She thinks that they're still fixable. She even tells him to kiss me on the cheek, which he f- pretends to do for the cameras, which is great. He kind of <coughs> leans in and makes yeah. the smacking sound, and then that's it. September 9th, we're now five weeks home. Uh, Nick still refuses to sleep in the same bed. Uh, I mean, yeah, don't blame him. And uh, he makes a comment, I would never, ever hurt you. Oh, she makes a comment, I'm sorry, to him. Which mm-hmm. I think is bananas, bad shit, crazy. This is the for me. This is the point where Amy is gone, like, ha, ha gone, girl. She is like without. There is no. Uh, ha, 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 ha. I think this is the last title card here. We're up to the very end. September twenty third. Seven Amy, weeks home. Amy is now seven weeks home, and Nick is practicing telling the truth about Amy in the mirror. Yeah, he's like everything you know about my wife is a lie. Blah blah blah. Turns out they've agreed to do an interview with this Nancy Grace type character who shows up to this their whole, home. Because this whole ending slightly different from the book. Yeah. Uh, the Nancy Grace lady kind of comes to their home and she's like, oh, Nick, it's so great to see you. He goes, you went on national television and accused me of murdering my wife. And she's like, oh, well, I go where the story goes. He goes, you had your pundits fucking diagnose me as a sociopath and you said that I had, I was having carnal relations with my sister. <laughs> And she goes, I never used the I word. I just said that you two were close. So basically, she can do no wrong. Uh, and they make a comment before they go on air. He, you know, he goes upstairs to tell Amy, hey, the Nancy Grace woman's downstairs. And Amy gives him a present. And inside this present is a pregnancy test that is positive. So Amy is pregnant this time and for realsies. Nick is livid. He's like, look, that's not my kid. We never, even, we haven't had sex since you've been home. Uh, it can't be Desi's kid, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Turns out, Amy kept that sample 
that she quote unquote threw away from the fertility clinic. So Amy is basically, since she's been home, used Nick's uh, sample to get herself pregnant. Not even because she just wants a baby for blackmailing purposes. Basically, he said, she says, now you really can't leave. Even if you wanted to leave now that I'm, you know, I'm out of the limelight, now I'm pregnant. And Jesus. he throws her against the wall for real this time. Like, of all the times that Amy gets thrown in this movie, this is the real one. And you can see the total fucking anger. He calls her oh, a cunt. Yeah. And she says, well, I'm the cunt you married. You wanted a cool, Damn. You wanted a cool girl. I am that cool girl. Or at least I pretend to be for you, you know, whatever. And so they go on this Nancy Grace program. They announce that they're having a kid. And Margo is upset. She says, I cannot watch you play house with that thing for 18 years. She's like, you can get custody. Nick's like, look, after all this shit that's happening, you know I will not get custody. <coughs> but Nick won't leave. Won't leave her because it is his kid. And he's he's got responsibilities. That's not up to what I want anymore. I have to stay with her. Like, I, I can't escape. It's my kid. Yeah. And that's where we end the movie, dude. Yeah. Like... Fuck. You thought we, we could have uh, ended the movie just with Amy coming home, I think, but no, they add on no. to it. Like, it's, and it makes like, dude, that it whole makes last difference. like little bit is fucking incredible. So like not said, only slightly different from the book, yeah, because in the book, like he actually like he writes a memoir, and she uses the semen to get pregnant in order to pretty much blackmail him into deleting yeah. it and like getting rid of it. So, dude, like, not only is he forced to be with this woman he doesn't want to be with that faked her on death and, like, framed him for murder, now she has taken his sample and, un- like, unbeknownst to him and fucking gotten herself pregnant just to blackmail him into keeping him there. So he can never trust her again. He, I don't think he can ever love her again, but he's, and he's got to stay with her because of this kid. And that's it, dude. That is the end of this bleak, bleak fucking movie. It's fucked. It's a very fucked up situation. And I gotta say, for once, uh, I don't really have any trivia about this. No, I mean, I'm pretty much like all the trivia I could think of, we pretty much discussed. Mm-hmm. But dude, the only yeah, thing I could just... say, well, I, I like to include trivia that's kind of relevant to. Well, let, can the... we let's talk about some of the other choices, like potential choices yeah, for ahead. Nick? Go ahead. So before Affleck, of course, it's Fincher. So Brad Pitt was rumored. I heard Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. I think that would have been cool. That would have been interesting as fuck. And uh, Ryan Reynolds. And which, John Hamm. Yeah. And John Hamm couldn't do it because of Mad Men. Yeah. Uh, and for Amy, it was going to be... Uh, do you know who was going to be it? Because who bought the rights to this? Uh, Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon which, was going to play it. I could see it. I could see it. Uh, Jessica Chastain was rumored mm-hmm. as well. I, I could see all three of those. But I think the two... like, Yeah, their um, chemistry is perfect. They got... like, Yeah, it's fucking... Rosamund Pike terrifies me in this movie, dude. Yeah. Um... Yeah. The only other trivia I could say, which again, I like to have trivia that kind of like goes along with the tone of the movie or like justifies the dark ending nature of it. Uh, so I didn't really have much to go on this one, but I can say that a uh, production of this movie got hold, uh, held up for three days because in the scene where uh, Ben Affleck's in the airport and he's watching the news and he has to kind of put a hat on to disguise himself. He refused to wear... He refused to wear a Yankees hat. Yep. And... Uh, He's because he's a diehard Red Sox fan, and so him and Fincher compromised with a Mets hat, which I think is just so hilarious. But I mean, Ben Affleck seemed like he was a good sport about it, and like the what I read about it. So he was like, "I can't, I can't do it, Finch. I can't wear a Yankees hat, man." Um, and this like this movie's like classic like Fincher production, hundred day schedule, over five hundred hours hours footage. Yep. Yep, that's. Fucking insane. For those of you who know, you probably shoot at most for a feature film. What would you say? Like under 10 pages a day? Yeah. And they're shooting five hours worth of footage a day? That's That's, bananas. Yeah. Fincher loves like he'll do a hundred takes of something. Yep. She said that uh, Rosamund Pike, when she gets thrown, when he throws her in the wall at the end of the movie, almost, like got almost got. Like, she almost had, went, uncon- yeah. <laughs> went uncon- un- unconscious. Well, no, like because I I love I love my Fincher stories, but the one from this is, um, Affleck made a bet with one of the camera guys or something that he's like, oh, he could change like, the camera. He lens? changed like he didn't even change the lens. He like adjusted the lens like. A minuscule amount, yeah, and bet the camera guy that Fincher wouldn't notice. Sure enough, real camera. Why does it look different? Yep. It's like 
Dude, Fuck Nolan Fincher? Nolan's the same way, apparently. Like, oh, I believe they it. They were off by, I think, like a percentage of a color spectrum that he wanted, and they he, he noticed it. That's insane. They know their shit, dude. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about silver linings for this movie? Because there's... Uh, I mean, we doesn't can offer try. Much. Yeah, it doesn't offer much. What do you got? I'll go first. For Nick and Amy and Margo and Desi and pretty much the main crew, I got nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Nancy Grace's ratings? Probably like just fucking sky high, skyrocketed <laughs> during all this. Yeah. She's going to... Her career is going to take off. Uh, I've got one so. here. And I got a second one I just thought of. Your welcome sell award. What I got here is kind of an off one, too. So okay. It's fine. Okay. Uh, Nick gets to keep all that cool shit that was in the woodshed that Amy bought to kind of frame him with. He's got a brand new big ass TV. Yeah, but uh, they still have to pay that off. Nah, he doesn't. It's not in his name. <laughs> Everything's in her name, remember? Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> and I do have to say, Nick did mention that he wanted a kid. Oh yeah, maybe not in the best. This is are the best circumstances. No, no, not at all. He'll still get his kid. Question though, again, we are to we really need a female perspective on some of these movies. Who's the bad guy? You know, I gotta I gotta say, I watched this movie with my girlfriend, and of course, I I don't want to say of course, but she, you know, she was like, "Well, he deserves it." At the end of the movie, and I was like, I knew that was gonna be your answer, your response, just because it is you are a woman coming from a woman's perspective. I was like, but the difference is. What he did wrong, <laughs> yeah, he cheated on her and he was abusive, at least what we see once uh, and, and before everything went to shit, right? So, yeah, he deserves some form of punishment. I don't think faking your own death, accusing and framing your husband of doing it, then coming back and blackmailing him with a child so he could never leave, uh, All I have to that's say, a little too far. I'm going to say... They deserve each other. Yeah, that's th- that's, that's the best. That's a uh, Tanner before he leaves. That's his kind of consensus yeah. too. Um. All right. So you need to watch something better after yeah. this. That's gonna make you not feel so shitty. What did uh, What did you go with? So I tried to stick with something else uh, that one of these characters in are in, and I went with I chose Rosamund Pike because I love her in okay. The World's End. Okay. Not my favorite Edgar Wright movie, but it's still, great movie though. still super fun. And nice. you know, Rosamund Pike is fun in that movie. She's still beautiful in that movie. And yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with with Edgar Wright, dude. Uh, right before we started recording, I was actually just finishing watching my alternative because I watched this again this morning and then needed to watch something else. It is another movie about Ben Affleck and a woman named Amy, and also one of my favorite films, mm-hmm. Chasing Amy. That, I mean, that's just right for the picking, dude. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this could have been, you know, call this Chasing Amy 2 and let's go to town, <laughs> cinematic universe on this bitch. Re-Chasing Amy, Chasing Amy yeah. again. Chasing Amy part <laughs> 2. All right, so is there anything else you want to talk about with this movie, or are we done? Um, I'm sad now. Yeah, I think I'm tapped out. Uh, so. so thanks, everyone, for listening this week. Please subscribe on iTunes since you're already there and leave us uh, some feedback and a rating. We would greatly appreciate it. If you want to, you can go to facebook.com slash the silver linings playlist. God, I do it every time. Facebook.com slash yeah, silver. Just, you cannot get that right. For facebook.com. The life of you. Yeah, get, I get quit. C- come on. You can get through it. Facebook.com slash silver linings playlist. Uh, not quite, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you're getting there. Uh, you can leave, leave us a suggestion for a movie that you think we should watch and try to find the silver lining to. Or you can just give us, you know, call us stupid. Whatever you want to do. Uh, clue for next week, Mally. Oh, what, I have one, sir. What is it? Cute little cum dumpster. <laughs> that could have been for this movie, man. Like, or shame. <laughs> We're doing it again. <laughs> All right. Well, that victory is victory lap. Your clue for next week, uh, Mally. Anything else you want to talk about before we go? As always, Excelsior. Excelsior.